The world is ever changing and sometimes we just need a helping hand. Hey, it's one more about the Rama. New apps here, new tech there. It's all very exciting, but it's nice to have something you can count on. Like insurance from State Farm. ¿Tienes preguntas sobre tu seguro? Con State Farm puedes llamar a tu agente o conectar con ellos. Aprende más en es.statefarm.com. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. We all know a guy who only occasionally shaves for big occasions, and it's because that occasional shave really hurts. It's the time of year for big occasions, and yet there he is, suffering with that cheap drugstore razor. Let's help him out. Henson Shaving's line of razors, built with aerospace precision, deliver a smooth shave your dad, brother, and even son can enjoy, eventually. With replacement blades just 10 cents each, you'll buy it once, and they'll use it for life. How's that for the perfect gift? Celebrate with 100 free blades on your first purchase, and no subscription headaches. HensonShaving.com slash holiday. Your mystery theater presents Yes, that does look like a bill. It's for water. 
Uh, do you question the accuracy of the bill, Mr. Lamb? Oh, I question the legitimacy. Why do I have to pay for water? Well, that should be obvious. You're using it. You can't send me a bill for using my own water. You are 100% correct. While I cannot send you a bill for using your own water, I am entitled to charge you for using mine. Yours? You happen to be drawing water from the Armagansett stream. Well, that's on my property, the property you sold me. True. But I didn't sell you the water rights. Well, this is the craziest thing I ever heard. If you consult the deed. And I happen to have a copy here before me. You will note where it says. Well, that print's so small, I can hardly read it. It is, nevertheless, legible. Uh -huh. mm. It states clearly. Seller holds in perpetuum all rights to the heretofore described Armagansett stream. Well, you mean it actually says... Uh, would, you, uh, would you care to use this magnifying lens? Uh. There you are. See? Paragraph three. For which purchaser shall pay $50 per month for use of water? Said fee to increase 8% each year. Well, this is an outrage. I didn't know that clause was in there. Surely your lawyer was aware of it. <laughs> My good Mr. Lamb, we have an agreement, you and I. You're a crook. And never, under any circumstances or conditions, will I do business with you again. Uh, excuse me. Yes, who? Oh, put him on. Uh, do you mind, Mr. Lamb? It's an important long-distance call. Yes, Mr. Roulette. Yes, indeed. Yes, I'm proceeding as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. Th there's one tiny obstacle, but we can clear that in short order. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes, I'll have good news for you very soon, Mr. Roulette. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. Uh, no, sir. Uh, where were we? I was telling you that you were a thief, an unprincipled scoundrel, and that I shall never, under any circumstances, ever do business with you in the future. Mm, I'm sorry you feel that way. Would you mind putting that in writing? Uh, uh, uh putting what in writing? Uh, the fact that you do not intend to exercise your option. What option? Well, if you look at paragraph four, you will see it says that you have an option to purchase the adjoining plot the Armagansett property for the same low price that you paid for the first parcel. Well, why would I ever want to buy even so much as a square inch of ground from you at any price and any condition? Well, <laughs> that, of course, is your prerogative. Once again, sir, good day. Uh -huh. Then you release me from my obligation to sell you the adjoining plot and thus permit me to place it on the open market. Well, you can do whatever you please. Knowing you, I'm sure it'll be something crooked. Then sign the statement. Oh, no. I sign nothing. Uh, Mr. Lamb, you cannot arbitrarily refuse to acknowledge my right to sell the property elsewhere. I'm acting in good faith. Just a minute. You have a buyer for that property. You are making an inference. Roulette. J. Babington Roulette. He was on the telephone just now. Who was he? He's putting up hotels with gambling casinos. Is that a fact? The other half of the Armageddon parcel. What a perfect place for a resort hotel. Hmm. Do you really think so? Just this once you may have outsmarted yourself. In what way? With that option clause. You thought it was all worthless acreage. Hmm. I may have. Now you have to let me have it for 10000 That's what it says. I insist on exercising that option. Oh? Are you sure? Absolutely. That land has to be worth at least a quarter of a million dollars to rule that. How you'd love to have clear, unobstructed rights to the land so that you could sell it to him yourself. <laughs> this town has got you. I'll make the fortune. Mr. Roulette will have to buy that land for me, and that's my price. Am I to understand that you wish to exercise your option? Have the papers drawn up. That's my client, Julius K. Barley. And who am I? Remember when the fellow was talking about the good angel and the bad angel that attends every man his whole life long? 
It so happens that I am Benjamin Benign, Mr. Barley's good angel. And I don't have an easy time of it. I'm usually on the carpet for the way I handle Mr. Barley. My supervisor, Mr. Nimbus, lives and breathes the rule book. Mr. Benign, I have a report here concerning Mr. Barley's latest escapade. Well, Mr. Nimbus, it isn't exactly an evil deed. No one forced Mr. Lamb to buy that second parcel of land. Mr. Barley implied that there was an eagle fire for the property. Uh, Mr. Barley never said so directly. Mr. Lamb chose to make the inference. And the fact is, you cannot cheat an honest man. But the fact is, Mr. Barley cheated Mr. Lamb on the first transaction. And all the conditions were spelled out in the agreement. In small print, but it wasn't illegal. It was done with the intention to cheat. What have you been doing to keep Mr. Barley honest, upright, virtuous? I've been trying very hard. He goes from bad to worse. Uh, I suppose I'll just have to try harder. I wonder if you're qualified to handle this assignment. I never lost a client yet. That's true. Yes, that's a fact. And I have the computer readout of your activity since the beginning of time. Well, that should mean something. It could mean you never had a client that the other side really wanted. Well, we have no way of knowing if that's true. We do now. You see, Mr. Benign... We have received a report from our intelligence. The other side has replaced Mr. Barley's current operative. I... I can't believe that. It means they think he has the potential to go all the way. Oh, not Junius K. Barley. I don't think there's any real harm in him. They've called in their ace, Nick Hellborn. Nick Hellborn? Yes, Nick Hellborn. Ah, well, for a while you get to know the competition. And as they were putting in Nick Hellborn on Junius K. Barley, it was proof they thought he had terrific potential. Nick only was president, kings, dictators, robber barons throughout history, only the top people. And it was Nick Hellborn who had turned them into men of evil. Uh, Mr. Nimbus, don't replace me. You must admit you haven't been aggressive enough. Yes, but now that I've got some real competition, it'll kind of spur me on to greater effort. Mm, we won't make a change just yet. Uh, but you'll have to show some positive results. And soon. Results. That's all they care about. Ah, I wish he'd give us a little more ammunition. The other side offers them wine, women, and song, or, as someone put it, power, health, and pleasure. And what can we give them? I said before that we generally know the competition, and they know us. I ran into my opposite number, Nick Hellborn, or maybe... He ran into me. What do you say, kid? Hello, Nick. Oh, sorry, I'm going to have to put an end to your batting streak. Don't be too sure of that, Nick. I guarantee you this. Junior K. Barley is going to be my main man. We'll see about that. <laughs> I like your spirit. Uh, but you don't know who you're talking to. I work the cream of the crop. I had a till of the hun. I own Machiavelli. Yes, yes, I know all your credits. And Junior K. Barley is the exact kind of character. I say he is. Oh, I'm sorry, but all the signs are there. And he's got the appetite. He's ready, and I'm ready. You won't get him. That's what this game is all about, isn't it? to see who has the last word. The last word. What is the last word? We know it's a concept that puzzles many philosophers. For in truth, the last word is the word that has yet to be spoken. And in a world that has no beginning and seemingly no ending, who can identify which word was first 
and which will be last. Hopefully, we may make some progress in that direction in our second act. it's always a case of doing right or doing wrong. And all of our arguments and justifications for pursuing a questionable course of action are like French cooking, which is the art of enhancing an inferior cut of meat with an intriguing sauce. I was worried. I was even frightened. While Barley wasn't exactly a good man, he wasn't exactly a bad one either. But now the other side had their eye on him and assigned their top operative, Nick Helborn. It was a cause for concern. How and when would Nick Helborn strike? And through whom? Yes. Who? Very well. Send her in. Good morning, Mr. Barley. I'm uh, Mrs. Quackenbush. <laughs> You're Mrs. Quackenbush? Of course. Uh, well, I, somehow I hadn't pictured someone like you when my secretary announced your name. You hadn't? Well, you hardly look like someone named Quackenbush. <laughs> well, that's my name. Cynthia Dolly Quackenbush. The very sound of the name calls to mind an elderly, uh, uh, el- a more mature type of woman. But I'm happiest when everyone calls me Dolly. Uh, uh, what may I do for you? We are about to enter a rather intimate relationship. Hmm, we are. Certainly. That is, in a business sense. Oh, I see. Now, you were recommended to me as one to whom I could safely trust my affairs. Was I? But now that poor Hubert is no longer with us, uh, Hubert was my late dear departed. Oh, I'm sorry. We must all leave sooner or later. Hmm. And Hubert left me rather well provided for, I think. Uh, you think? Well, you would have to evaluate the investments and so forth. Now, you must excuse me. Oh, of course. Uh, and I'll make a complete study. Will you do that? I'm due for lunch with the Baroness Duval. Oh, the Baroness Duval. Oh, you mean the famous French divorcee? Oh, she's a dear friend. I always use her apartment when I'm in Paris. Uh, do you? Um, yes, I'll try to analyze your portfolio as soon as possible. Oh, no, Raj. See, I'm leaving tomorrow for Washington. Biff is doing a command performance at the White House. Uh, Biff? Valentine Turkus. Oh. Oh, you mean the great violinist? Oh, well, Biff's a dear friend. And he always makes sure the gang's invited to come along. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, when do you think you'll be back in town? Oh, well, that's hard to say. See, now, tomorrow's Thursday, and we're all going to the Costa del Sol for the weekend. Uh, uh, you mean the Costa del Sol uh, in Spain? Yes, it's been discovered. No sorts go now. But these are democratic times, so what can you do? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, uh, then you'll be back next week. Next week? Oh, that's an eternity away. Uh, uh, when will you return? Eventually, my dear. <laughs> Eventually. was Nick Helborn's opening gun. And what a gun, eh? Dolly sparkled with delight and glowed with promise. And every word she said touched the nerve. She was raising the curtain on a new fantastic world for Junius K. Barley. And what did I have to fight her with? Whom did I have to fight her with? Supper's almost ready, Junius. Yeah. I'm sorry I didn't get home till late. Oh, it's, it's, it's all right. Oh, I had such an exciting day at the school. Did you? I finally think I've been able to reach the Everett boy. Mm-hmm. Little Artie Everett, I do believe he'll be able to read any day now. Mm-hmm. Did you have an interesting day? Routine. Oh, poor genius. Stella, what kind of life is it? You just handle pieces of paper. <laughs> 
You forget many of those pieces of paper are money. And the object is to make each of them create more pieces of paper. Mm-hmm. If you can do it. You can do it. You can do it very well. Actually... Actually what? Actually, there are those people who say you can do it too well. Uh, now, look here, Ruth. Everything I've ever done is legitimate and above board. Oh, I'm sure of that. Business is a battle of wits. The idea is to get all you can from the other fellow. Because he's out to get all he can from you. And if a fellow isn't as smart or as clever as you are... Uh, or as ruthless? Uh, yes, ruthless. That part of it. But where can it lead? <laughs> to success. Oh, is it any fun? Fun? It's all really just dead pieces of paper. There's no warmth, no human touch. Oh, darling, I'll tell you what let's do tonight. Uh, Ruthie, I'm really tired. Why don't we go to the community house? What for? I could teach the girls swimming, and you could coach some boys basketball. <sighs> Why don't we do that some other time? Well, everybody has to try to help out in this world. Yeah, sure. Later. Uh, did you bring home the evening paper? Uh, oh, oh, I did. Junior, please listen to me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm listening. Well, I feel that we were put here to... Sorry, I don't want to sound creepy, but there's so much to be done. And you know something? People like you and me, we have to do it. Uh, are you listening? Yeah, yeah. Of course. Do you know why? Because we're lucky. We're fairly young, strong. You make good money. Maybe you think sometimes it's not enough, but what is enough? Will you look at this? The Baroness Duval. Who? Here's her picture. What am I doing in America? That's what you're saying to the reporter. I have come here to have lunch with a friend. And? Mm. And that's it. Can she fly here from Paris just to have lunch? <laughs> Why not? She can afford it. Can she? Oh, I'm sure she has plenty of money. Oh, I'm sure her pocketbook can afford it, but can her time? We all know a guy who only occasionally shaves for big occasions, and it's because that occasional shave really hurts. It's the time of year for big occasions, and yet there he is, suffering with that cheap drugstore razor. Let's help him out. Henson Shaving's line of razors, built with aerospace precision, deliver a smooth shave your dad, brother, and even son can enjoy, eventually. With replacement blades just 10 cents each, you'll buy it once, and they'll use it for life. How's that for the perfect gift? Celebrate with 100 free blades on your first purchase, and no subscription headaches. HensonShaving.com slash holiday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, what are you talking about? Well, to spend thousands of dollars on some trivial foolishness. Oh, well, maybe it's not so trivial or unimportant to her. Well, she could do so many better things with her money. <laughs> you just said the magic word. Her. It's her money. And she can spend it any way she pleases. She has that right. She does? <laughs> He stood there, just looking at him. It was an old argument, and she never got the better of it. But what other ammunition could I give her? Like I said, the opposition has all the big guns. Well, she wasn't tall and willowy like Dolly, nor did she have long, lustrous black hair or gleaming red lips, nor was she full-bodied, and yet gracefully slender like Dolly. Ah, Dolly was definitely going to be my problem. Well, Mr. Benign, we have just become aware of Dolly. I know all about Dolly. And what are you doing about her? There's only one thing I can do within the restrictions placed upon us. Yes? I can only strengthen Mrs. Ruth Varley. Strengthen? I can only... Make her as attractive as possible. No, no paint and powder in this or any other world could hope to make Ruthie Parley as attractive as Dolly. We can only hope for the best. I think I'd better call in your replacement. Why? Perhaps he could try some other tactic. Such as? Well, Mr. Nimbus, you know as well as I do that there simply isn't any other tactic. Oh. Oh. All we're allowed is the one tactic, the single method. And if it doesn't work, we're finished. We lose another one. Oh, I prayed we would be able to keep Julius K. Barley 
Oh, I'll admit I was being selfish. I was thinking of my own record. But it was more for his sake than mine. It wouldn't have been all so bad if I didn't keep running into Nick Hellborn. Kid, I'm disappointed. Ah, uh, uh, about what? Oh, I expected more of a tussle, if you know what I mean. It's all too easy. You think so? You don't have Junius K. Barley yet. I've got him all wrapped in a package and tied with a bow. I could remind you not to count your chickens. Mm. You could. I could also tell you that you can't sell the skin of a bear that's still in the woods. And you know what I can tell you, kiddo? Anytime a guy starts spouting proverbs, it's a sign he's whistling in the graveyard. Oh, by the way, don't forget to tune in the TV tonight, hmm? TV? What TV? Then I remembered the concert, the command performance, and she would be there. Dolly would be there. And, of course, Junius would be watching on his TV. I could see from the way the camera was pointing that just past the soloist, you could most of the time see this absolutely fantastic-looking woman. And I could picture Junius staring at her. Then say it now. Very well. Your husband 
left you no estate. Uh, I beg your pardon. I said your husband left you no estate. Oh, but that's impossible. Uh, I gave you that portfolio. Uh, uh, I, I am aware of it. Then that. how can you say he left me no oh, estate? All the stocks, all the bonds, all the securities are worthless. I don't believe that. I... I'm, I'm truly sorry. Oh, it can't be. Uh, you own hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of bonds from the Triple Square Corporation. It's a moribund company. But I don't understand. Nothing there could be worth anything. A silver mine abandoned years ago. Played out. One company after another, dead or, or ready to die. <laughs> Your husband left you all this. But he speculated. There would be wild swings one day. He'd be up from one day. He'd be down... Unfortunately, I suppose he died on a the down day. Well, I must say that you're taking this rather calmly. Shouldn't I? <laughs> We've just been informed that you've been reduced to poverty. Well, I, I could never be poor. Hmm? Yeah. Uh, you couldn't? I have too many friends. Uh, well, the terrible truth is that valid friendships are only possible among equals, and, Dolly, you're no longer equal to your friends. Uh, financially. Oh, that's merely a temporary condition. Ah, then you have other assets. Oh, yes, of course. Well, I'm relieved to hear that. I have one other asset at this time. Hmm? And what is that? You should say, who? And I would answer, you. Me? Of course. I'm... I'm not sure I understand. Don't you? Come here. I'm sure I can explain it. Uh, Dolly, I... Come with uh, me, Junius. Uh, where? Anywhere, everywhere. Do you want to spend the rest of your life in this suffocating little law office, pulling little deals here and there? Well, but how, how You have I... a nice little home and a nice little wife and a nice little life. Is that what you want? You're bored. That's why you fleece little suckers like Mr. Lamb. Uh, how do you know that I... Oh, I, come I... out into the world, Junius, and meet some big suckers. Uh, what are you saying? You belong out there with me. I have the contact. Whom do you want to meet? All the doors are open to me. Let me take you inside. Uh, uh, inside where? You belong up there with me. Uh, with you? We belong together. But I'm uh, married now. Oh, it's just as easy to get yourself unmarried. You mean divorce, Ruthie? Do you love her? I love her. Thought about it uh, uh, lately. That's what I mean. You should be thinking about her day and night. I could make you think about me day and night. Well, but I. Oh, I understand. You did love her at first. After all, that's why you married her. But do you still find her as interesting, as stimulating, as exciting? Look at me and answer that. I. Oh, Do you want to you... spend the rest of your life with plain little Ruthie? He was slipping through my fingers. I was getting panicky. I had never lost a client before, but this one was going. Just about gone. They wanted Junius K. Barley. They wanted him so badly they were pulling out all the stops. I'd never felt so much pressure in all my career. And, of course, Nick kept rubbing it in constantly. Well, here we are, kiddo, in the bottom of the ninth. You got two strikes on you, two out, and you're down by a dozen runs. What do you do now? Well, this thing is far from over. I'll save him somehow. Say, do you want me to put in a good word for you? What are you talking about? But you've got good style. Anytime you want to jump the club you're with now and come over to mine, we can find a good spot for him. No, thank you, Mr. Hellboy. Oh, you should be with a real outfit. Where you get something to work with, especially dames like, um, I got Dolly. Who you got? Ruthie? Uh, I'm happy with Ruthie. Uh, but which one of them got the looks? And which is just the plain change? Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Uh, oh, there you go with the proverbs again. A sure sign you're about to press the panic button. But far 
worse than Nick Helborn was my own supervisor, Mr. Nimbus. He had not only pressed the panic button, he was sitting on it. What do you propose to do now, Benjamin? I'm doing everything I possibly can. Uh, we can only hope for the best. If this is one we cannot afford to lose. We can't afford to lose any of them. But you need us here special. Yes, I understand. Oh, do you? Do you really? A man with Barley's brains happens along once every millennium. In the wrong hand, in the hands of Nick Helborn, he could become a monster. He could take over the world. I know that. You must fight for him. Fight? What did he think I was doing anyhow? But every day I would watch what Nick Helborn was throwing at Junior. And Colette has this darling penthouse in Paris. And Giorgio says we can use his yacht to cruise the Greek islands at any time. And what did I have going for me? Junius, do you suppose we could volunteer for the hospital blood donor committee? There's no question that Nick had Dolly casting her spell. She was ready to make her kill. The money's no problem, darling. First, we can sell all my poor late husband's securities, especially the mine. Uh, uh, but they're worthless. Of course. Well, then that's not exactly honest, is it? No, not exactly. I've never done anything before, darling, that was out and out dishonest. So why not? You flirt with the idea constantly, don't you? Well, You come I, I... close. Oh, so very close. And then you, you back away. Why? Why? Uh, you delight in toying with the concept. You want to. You want to so badly. Why don't you? You want to be rich. Really rich. It can happen. You can sell anybody anything. <laughs> a worthless mine? You've already sold worthless land. I made no claims for it. Oh. Oh, I may have allowed people's imaginations to run unchecked, but, uh, but but I never lied. Let the record show that. Oh, why are you so concerned with the record? What record? How do you know there actually is a record, or that somebody is watching, or even cares? I... You want me. You know you want me. And you want wealth and power, and you can have it all. Dolly, I... It's all I... yours. Take it. Take it. <laughs> He was all softened up for a kill. Sooner or later, he would have to talk to Ruthie and tell her. For days, I'd been watching him, trying to nerve himself for the ordeal. He was going to leave her. That much he had practically decided. But first, there would have to be a scene, and he didn't like scenes. Ah. Oh. Of course... There was no way I could talk to him. There was no way I could talk to Ruthie either. But there was one idea I might be able to get across to her. Just one little thing she should say to him. It might tip the balance. You're home early. Uh, yes, Ruthie. I wanted to talk to you. I know. Uh, well, what do you know? I guess I know everything. Hmm? Well, what, what, what does that mean? Well, it means you want to leave me. Uh, oh, oh, why do you say that? It's true, isn't it? Who, who, who told you? You told me. Now, wait a minute. When did I tell you? Oh, not in words. I could tell by the way you react to me. Lucy, I... There is another woman, isn't there? Yes. I... I suppose she has a lot to offer. She does, doesn't she? Yes. Yes, Ruthie. She's very beautiful, isn't she? Oh, yes. And very rich? Well, she knows how to become rich. And so do you. Uh, that's true. From now on, you just won't shear the lambs anymore. You'll go on to the wolves. Uh, you could say that. There won't be any stopping you. No holds barred, no rules. Devil take the hindmost. Uh, I'm sorry, but there are things I want. 
Lucy, there are things I have to have. And you will, Jimmy. You'll have them all. She can give you everything. Except one thing. Hmm? I'm the only one who can give you that. What? Uh, what do you mean? I mean, a night's sleep. What are you talking about? I, I could always sleep at night. Of course. What did you have on your mind or on your conscience? Oh, you may have pulled a sharp little deal here and there, but who did you ever hurt? Who did you ever destroy? Oh, I, I've seen your new lady. She's beautiful. Unbelievably beautiful. You're being very generous. How many other men will want her, too? Men as handsome as you. Handsomer. You'll be getting older. That'll keep you awake. At least with a plain life, you don't have those worries. No, Lucy, I, I wouldn't say you were plain. I but... said you were going after the wolves. But you'll be a wolf, too. They'll also be out to get you. You'll need friends, associates. But will you be able to trust them? That'll help keep you awake. Lucy. Now that I think of it, you might just as well go off with her. What are you saying? What can I offer you? Only one small thing. A good night's sleep. She said it. Somehow I'd gotten through to her, and she said it. He stood there and laughed. <laughs> Ruthie, can you forget what I said and forgive me? I'll forgive you, but I'll never forget it. And that's the way it ended. I preserve my record. Mr. Nimbus no longer nibbles on his fingernails when he thinks of Junius K. Barley. And even old Nick Kelborn had a compliment for me. Well, kid, you did a great job. But tomorrow's another day. And so it is. As they used to say, another day, another dollar. But that was way back when a dollar a day was a handsome wage indeed. But while tomorrow will always be another day, yet in some ways, it will be the same day as today. In one way or another, it will present us with the same problems, the same challenges, the same opportunities. What other reward could there possibly be? For if virtue could be bought or sold, why then it simply wouldn't be virtue. And the very next time, some still small voice within you urges you to follow a virtuous course. Remember, it's the voice of Mr. Benjamin Benign or one of his colleagues. They need all the help they can get. And so do you. The cast included Fred Gwynn, Bob Dryden, Ray Owens, and Bryna Rayburn. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. know a guy who only occasionally shaves for big occasions and it's because that occasional shave really hurts it's the time of year for big occasions and yet there he is suffering with that cheap drugstore razor let's help him out henson shavings line of razors built with aerospace precision deliver a smooth shave your dad brother and even son can enjoy eventually with replacement blades just 10 cents each you'll buy it once and they'll use it for life how's that for the perfect gift Celebrate with 100 free blades on your first purchase. And no subscription headaches. HensonShaving.com slash holiday. Don't forget that your skin is your largest organ, and the sun can be your skin's worst enemy. Dermatologists recommended Neutrogena products offer the ultimate protection for your skin. From makeup remover wipes to Hydro Boost Water Gel Facial Moisturizer, BJ's has your entire lineup of Neutrogena skincare products 
And now through December 3rd, save $4 on any Neutrogena product at BJ's. Love your skin back and save now through December 3rd, only at BJ's.